It's here. I've already gotten a ton of requests about this already. The latest Ellen Becker video. Animation versus geometry. Needless to say, geometry is used quite a lot in engineering, especially in nuclear engineering. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Check this out. Everything starts from a point. orange guy. I guess he has to pull himself out of there because the point was essentially zero dimensional and now he's on a one dimensional object, a line. Or I guess if you're going back to classical geometry, just a line segment because geometry is weird and that it's purely theoretical and that a line using the strict definition is actually infinite. So this is just part of the line. <laughs> Nothing down there. Point A, point B. There you go. Another line, the line segment. Okay, the arrow. So in physics, I mainly think of the arrow as a vector. So in this case, we're looking at displacement rather than raw distances and distance from a specific object. But in pure geometry, it's array, meaning that you have a point on one side and then the other sign extends to infinity. Basically a one-way infinite line. Angles. I love the sound effects and how crisp the animation is. One of my favorite things about all of Alan Becker's stuff. Right angles. <laughs> love it, he just proved there are 180 degrees in a line. <laughs> or two right angles. Ratios, okay. Basically that just means segment A is the same size as segment B if the ratio is one. A being smaller now. Whoa! Is that... Oh! Okay. It's the golden ratio. That's... That's clever. It gives a gold flash when you go past it. So the golden ratio, its value is about 1.618 and some change. It's an irrational number just like pi or square root of two. It shows up all the time in architecture and defined as the ratio of the sum of the two segments divided by the first segment being equivalent to the ratio of the first segment divided by the second segment. Or for those of you who are more Mathematically inclined, the solution of the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And when you solve that, you get the irrational number 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, or 1.618 and some change. It also shows up a lot in nature, from galaxies to shellfish. And it's known for its aesthetics, such as the Vitruvian Man. Now, as far as engineering design, it mainly shows up aesthetic as far as architecture, but there are some applications even in nuclear engineering that it does show up, and that's with regards to symmetry. It is very important in nuclear power plants to keep your nuclear fuel heat distribution symmetrical, and one of the things about the golden ratio is it's often associated with an optimal use of space, which is very important when you try to uh, cram a bunch of nuclear fuel assemblies into a reactor vessel in order to maximize its power output, but without having it be too hot in one particular spot of the core. And since it's reductive, other more subtle applications include optimization algorithms for your heat, your radiation distribution in your core. Really cool stuff. <laughs> Got it dialed in. 
And that phi is the symbol for that. Awesome. Okay. Uh-oh. It would appear the Phi is alive. This reminds me of an animation versus math with Euler's identity E raised to the I value times pi plus 1 equals 0, and E to the I pi being negative 1 is running away from our little orange stick man here. That's coming. An angle. Oh, it made a triangle. We have upgraded to 2D. A right triangle. Square, and you open it up. <laughs> Whoa. So those lines, those hash marks you saw, are referring to line segments of the same length. Right triangles. In the okay. Adding more sides. So you eventually get to a circle. Now we have it. And our golden ratio friend just used his magical gold powers to make a right triangle inside of a circle. those gold flashes. I guarantee you a lot more people would find geometry entertaining if they just watched this video at the beginning of their class. And then at the end, now that after the class is done so they can show what they've learned. Pythagorean theorem. He squared the sides, and he made, he squared the sides by literally making them into squares. That's awesome. This is way more interesting than when I had to do proofs in high school. I, I was not the biggest fan of those. Instead, now people in high school just show them this video. Gonna add him up and make another scene. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, they're buddies. What's up? Whoa! Okay, it appears they have opted to skip three dimensional objects and move straight to four, or maybe five. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell when looking at a 2D screen exactly how many dimensions that is, but I'm just gonna call it four. And it is hungry. Ooh, using lines. All right. Using one-dimensional objects on a four-dimensional object. I mean, if you look at string theory, for instance, you're talking about infinitesimally st small strings, theoretically one-dimensional, that do interact with the universe. So it's not impossible for lower-dimensional things to have effects on much higher dimensional things, but something tells me it's not going to work too well. <laughs> you might need to respond with his, uh, with a four-dimensional response in kind. Yeah. I like how it's phasing both in and out of this two-dimensional space you see on screen. And of course, I'm trying to comprehend it in three-dimensional space. Whatever it is, it's aggressive. <laughs> Using rays. I mean, they're infinite in length, and look at the infinities uh, bouncing off of this guy. This guy's clearly finite, so maybe that might even the playing field. Though at the same time, a lot of a uh, four-dimensional object is straight up inaccessible for a one-dimensional object, so... Who really knows? Oh, it's a little wheel. 
There you go. Nice. Flee from the thing into the golden spiral. Yeah, each of those are golden ratios. Not sure how that tricked the 4D object, though. Just because it's 4D doesn't mean it's smart. Circle. <laughs> Triangle hang glider. Train glider. Army of golden ratios. Pentagrams, especially when they're located in pentagons, can have a lot of golden ratios in them. And they go all the way down too, which is pretty cool. Whoa, those are golden triangles made by golden ratios. Those are isosceles triangles, two sides the same length. The base angles are 72 degrees and the pointy ends at 36 degrees. It's a real power symbol that shows up. But can it take down a fourth dimensional being? Uh-oh, they made it angrier. Squares. <laughs> Golden lasers. I was gonna try to capture it. Using a three-dimensional object. You're seeing fractals as it goes into it. That is that is amazing. <laughs> Which fractals are kind of an interdimensional thing. I've heard some people jokingly refer to fractals as two and a half dimensions. I mean that's not that's not really the case, but it just has to do with their design. <laughs> There you go. They got it in a triangular pyramid. Not to be confused with, say, the pyramids of Giza because they have a square as a base. There you go. Just went from tetrahedron to octahedron. But will it be enough? And then a cube within it. <laughs> now what I'm trying to figure out here is it might be a bit different between 3D and 4D, but wouldn't that be a bit like trying to trap me in a really big piece of paper, 3D and 2D? Not sure that would work out too good, but either way, I still love this. <laughs> Is that a... is that a dodecahedron? I can't quite tell because it's a bit small. All 12 faces. Let's see if this will be enough. It's magic. Oh, look at those fractals. Yeah, it's definitely a dodecahedron. <laughs> it's 
funhouse mirror effect. They tame it. Oh wow. Enter it and see all the higher order dimensions. Okay, yeah, he definitely used it as some sort of dimensional portal because it has magical properties, allegedly. And that's the character from Animation vs. Physics. And it all got reduced back to a point, so hey, we ended up right where we started. <laughs> that was amazing. I'm guessing the cycle will repeat. Thank you very much for the recommendation, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.